Hi, I'm Jake at Shepherd Creations, and today we're going to build a homemade propane forge. So I got these bricks from a buddy of mine, actually his father. He was building a outdoor pizza oven, and I think these bricks are rated somewhere around 2,000 to 4,000 degrees. I can't remember the exact temperature. But I ended up picking them up from his father for free. And so what I'm doing right now is just trying to decide how I'm going to make the, the overall box of the forge. Trying to determine how long I want it to be, if I want to have a hearth in the front and the back. And I decided to have a hearth in the front and in the back. Uh, here I'm going to end up cutting a couple of the side bricks, like right here. Actually, I'm not cutting them. My father-in-law is cutting them. Just cut them in half so I can shorten the length of the box. My father-in-law is a fantastic dude helping me build this box. He's cutting the angle iron. I actually got that angle iron for free as well. I uh, gave a couple things to a buddy of my father-in-law, and he had some scrap angle iron hanging around, so picked it up and ended up using that to build the propane forge. All I'm doing is cleaning off the burrs as, as well as my father-in-law after we cut uh, the pieces to length. Now we're just laying out the floor plan of the box and I'm gonna essentially picture frame the sides. Right here, I am using a little oscillating hand sander to clean up the side of the bricks. Some of them were used and then taken out of the pizza oven, so they have some mortar on the sides of them. So I'm just cleaning that off so all the bricks fit nice and snugly together. If you look at the hand sander, it sure is happy. It looks like it's got a big smile on the side of it. Uh, I just noticed that when I was editing this video. I thought it was funny. Happy little hand sander. Look at that guy smile. <laughs> so this is the top of the box and we're just picture framing the top just like we did the bottom. And here in a second you'll get to see me weld for the first time. I think I might have welded a little bit when I was younger. Funny, uh, I ended up learning to weld from my father-in-law and both my grandfather and father were uh, welders growing up and I was just too young at the time to learn but uh, it's just kind of funny that now that I'm older I ended up learning from my father-in-law but I know my father and grandfather would have taught me to weld anyway just never ended up happening anyway these are the first couple welds of my uh, my life just uh, trying to learn I actually messed up the feed a couple times and but it ended up working out ended up working out. I actually kind of got the hang of it after a while.
Here I'm cleaning up the welds on the frame so they're a little bit nicer and neater when we go to bolt everything together and it's all finished. I ended up losing the audio for the majority of these videos, so I ended up just scrapping it on all of it. I think it would have been cool to be able to hear the grinder in the background. Not everybody likes it, but I think if you're watching construction, construction and building videos that some people do, I think I'm going to do everything I can next time that I weld and grind to uh, make sure I get a little bit of the audio in the background because I enjoy it. I think it would have been a good addition to the video. Here I'm welding on some tabs to hold the all thread to clamp the bottom frame and the top frame together once I get the bricks put inside. These are some tabs that my father-in-law already had. Uh, I mean, it would just be as simple as getting a piece of metal and drilling a hole through it big enough to fit your all thread. But uh, they were just some brackets that he had. I can't remember. They might have been for a trailer or something like that. We just cut them in half and ended up using those because it's what we had. Kind of funny, I'm actually welding these brackets to the end of the bottom frame. The problem with that is the bottom frame is a lot bigger than the top frame. So these brackets are completely in the wrong place. Uh, you'll see that here in a few minutes. But cool thing about these brackets being where they are, I could you know, hang clamps or tongs or something off of them. So uh, no harm, no foul, not a big deal. It didn't mess up the construction of the of the propane forge. So uh, they can be utilized for other things in the future. They're just not in the right spot. You can see right here my father-in-law actually taking measurements and lining up the brackets on the top and the bottom of the frame uh, to be in the right spot. <laughs> uh, definitely nice to have him around to fix my mistakes. But like I said, it ended up all working out just fine.
Here's a decent little surround shot of the forge at this point. We took an old brake drum that we had and a couple of lawnmower wheels and made the base. The pipe stand that it's sitting on is just an old pipe that we found. I think my father-in-law had it. So still, everything is just things that we've salvaged. Right here, I'm just taking some measurements of the opening so that I can end up putting some doors on this forge. I want to have some swinging doors. You know, I've seen a lot of people build similar forges, but they just, you know, they want to put a door on, so they just slide a brick over in front of it. But they don't really go all the way, so I'm going to make a little chassis uh, for the door frame, uh, slide a brick down in there, weld it together, and then we'll have a swinging door on both ends of the forge. I'm actually kind of impressed now going back and watching these videos for the editing process. I'm actually pretty proud with uh, this weld right here. I mean, granted, I'm not a professional or anything like that, but considering the struggles that I had when I was first learning this day, I'm really proud of what's happening right now. <laughs> Right here, I'm just drilling the hole for the hinge uh, for the back door. I've already got the first one put on there. I didn't get a chance to film it. And now we are cutting the all thread to length so that we can connect the top frame and the bottom frame together and sandwich the bricks in between the top and bottom frame. I wanted to make this forge tour. It was kind of modular or if a brick broke that I w it was going to be easy to take apart and put new bricks in later so uh, that is why I built it with all thread and nuts so that I could of course take it apart and then this way if I need to adjust anything or change anything in the future it won't be too hard just using the porta bandsaw to cut the all thread So what I'm doing here is feeding the all thread down through the brackets that are there on the top and bottom of the frame. And then I'm going to put the nut right on the end and actually tack weld the nut to the end of the all thread. That way it's always there. Uh, and then once I get them all tack welded, I'll flip them upside down and actually put the finish nuts on the top of the frame. I didn't figure that I needed both of them removable. Just tack weld the bottom side and then I'll be able to put the nuts on the top.
cool thing about this entire build is that it probably cost me less than $50. Really, I just spent the money on the four pieces of all thread, and they were all pretty much cut from one piece of all thread, and then I had to purchase the uh, nuts to fit. And really, that was the entire expense. Everything else I got for free. It was given to me or I salvaged. So, uh, you know, if you look in the right places, you're patient, you can end up building some of these things for free in a lot of cases. Uh, just all about patience and knowing the right person. But that's how I ended up building this whole thing for under 100 bucks. Uh, and I'm really proud of that. It's really nice to be able to reuse and recycle materials. One thing that I would keep in mind whenever you're tightening these brackets, if you end up building a forge this way, is don't tighten them too tight because you could end up cracking the bricks and of course that wouldn't be good for you. I do plan on going in with some fire brick mortar uh, in between the bricks to make sure that we don't have any flames that are coming out the sides. Well, here it is. Still not finished. I got to get the propane burner up top. I'll put that in a future video. I've actually got the propane burner that I built about two years ago, actually before the forge was built. But I haven't seen too many forges that have these swinging doors. I haven't really seen any, actually. So I'm really proud of how it turned out. And if you have any questions, please let me know. Thanks for watching the video, and I will see y'all in the next video.